If you haven't seen my other tutorial on basic Gary's Mod mapping, you might need it if you're not sure how to launch and set up Hammer. Otherwise, please enjoy. I'm not going to explain how you should organize your map, because that's up to you, but I will remind you of the basics and how to avoid any major problems. Creating map geometry is simple. Use the block tool, select a texture on the right side that you want the block to display, then click and drag in any of the three orthographic graphs to create a block with the Enter key placing it. Using the Z or Z key, you can navigate in the 3D window with the WASD keys and see your level in more detail than the graphs show. Create as many blocks as needed until you are satisfied with the map layout. To cut edges into your blocks, use the clipping tool and click and drag through a selected block on the graph. Clicking the clipping tool will cycle through its three modes, and the Enter key will remove anything from the object that is not surrounded in white. If both sides are white, the clipping tool will simply cut a line through the object. You can also change the type of object that is created by the block tool by selecting other options on the right side. A very quick tutorial on putting water into your level would be to select the no draw texture, create a block that will act as the water, select a water texture, and paint it onto the top face of the no draw block with right click. This makes the map run better than simply creating a block with the water texture already selected. Now we need to get the player into the level. Older versions of Hammer used to create the spawn point entity flush to the ground, which would result in the player being stuck in the floor. Now you can just use the Entity tool and click anywhere to create the generic spawn point. I am using Counter-Strike Source as my base game that I am building off of, so the terrorist spawn point is the default. If you're using CSS like me, all you have to do is double click the Entity with the Select tool and change it from an Info Player Terrorist to an Info Player Start. I recommend making multiple spawn points. You can do a lot with a good skybox. It's important to choose a texture that both fits your map and looks good in general. The way that 3Clicks Philip taught me to do this, and the easiest way in my opinion, is to create a cube around your map with the default skybox tool texture selected. Then to make this cube hollow, click Tools, then Make Hollow. Choose a negative number if you want the cube to become hollow outwards. Now to choose an actual texture, search skybox in the filter field and look for one that looks nice you're going to want to memorize the name of the skybox. Go to your map properties, skybox, and enter the name into the field. Remove any suffixes that denote the skybox direction, such as LF or FT, DN, etc. Also, remove anything before the actual name of the skybox, so the backslash and before. 3D skyboxes are not a must, but they make your level look so much better. To make one quickly, create another hollow skybox somewhere in the level, outside of the main skybox. This time, create the ground that you'll see when you look outside of the level, and create the entity sky underscore camera in the middle of that ground. This entity will project anything that is in this 3D skybox into the view of the skybox in the level. Its 3D skybox scale value of 32 means that anything in this skybox will look 32 times as large when viewed in the world. So for our ground textures to look nice, we need to divide their X and Y value sizes by 32. In this way, the 3D skybox will be scaled correctly and will give the level an illusion of being much larger. Proper lighting is necessary in any level. I will not delve into the details of full HDR lighting, but a good setup of an ENV underscore sun and a light underscore environment can go a long way. The light underscore environment provides a sort of area light that coats your level, just as the sun does. And the sun entity itself acts as a point of bright light that we see in the skybox. Well, at least, that's a simple way of putting it. So create both an ENV underscore sun and light underscore environment, Move them into the sky at the same position, go to either of their properties, and you're going to want to point both of them in the exact same direction. You can do this by simply pointing one, copying its chords, then pasting those into the position field of the other entity. By doing this, we have a realistic lighting set with the sun as the light source. As for other lighting, I will not get into advanced stuff but you need some sort of light source to illuminate any inside spaces. 
I simply created light entities in the interiors and double clicked on them to edit their brightness properties. To make the actual light source models that you'll see in the level, just create an entity, change it to a prop underscore static because we don't want the model to fall from the ceiling. Then change its world model to something such as a light fixture. Just put the light entity under the light fixture on the ceiling and you'll have a convincing setup. Now the rest of the map details are up to you. Random things include buttons, doors, decals, more lights, props, proper AI nodes, HDR lighting, and numerous optimizations to make sure your map runs well. This map took me a couple hours to make, but the result was definitely worth it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Yes, sir. Come in, come in.